All right, time to go teach. Welcome to this next unit in Tutor Tutors, where we are going to be looking at biochemistry. Today is our introduction to biochemistry, and we are going to just be looking at atoms. Our learning targets, well, first, we're going to define what matter is. And after we define matter, we're going to look at what makes an atom a specific type of atom. And lastly, identify and comparing the four main elements that we care about in biology. See, we don't care about every type of element out there. Many elements are not going to be found in very high amounts in organisms, but there are four that really, really, really are important for all life. And so we're going to focus in on those at the very end. Before we get started, the first thing to understand is that biology is not a foundational science. What that means is that biology, it relies upon other sciences, specifically chemistry and physics. The laws that are found in those two fields of science are what allows for life to exist. The interactions of physical things, the interactions of chemicals, that's what allows you and me to be able to do all the different things that we do. So biology, it relies upon chemistry and it relies upon physics. We're gonna focus on how biology relies upon chemistry today. First off, we have to understand what chemistry studies and that is called matter. So matter is anything that occupies space. It doesn't matter if it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. All of those things occupy space. They take up a specific amount of space. They have mass as well. And while it might not seem like you know, a gas takes up space, you and I both know that a gas does take up space because we use it to fill the air in our tires. We use it to pump up a basketball. So because the air is able to fill that space, we know that it must be made of something. It's not just emptiness. And that's what matter is. Matter, it's made of something. And that something is an atom. So matter is made up of these things called atoms. And atoms, let's look at that, well, they're the smallest unit of a specific element that still retains the properties of that element. See, atoms, it doesn't matter if you have one atom or if you have a million atoms or if you have just an innumerable amount of atoms. If they are all of the same element, they will have the exact same properties. But if they're of different elements, then they will have different properties. And atoms are the smallest particle that you can have different types of them. Once you get smaller to an atom, every particle at that level is exactly like every other particle at that level. So atoms are the smallest particles where there are different types. And those different types are called elements, which we'll get to in a little bit. But specifically, when we look at what an atom is made of, atoms are made up of two main areas and three different types of particles. The two areas are called the nucleus and the electron cloud. The two particles found in the nucleus are the protons and the neutrons. And they make up the entirety of the nucleus and they also make up all of the mass of that atom. The electron cloud, the only particle that is found there is, well, the electron. So that's how an atom is typically arranged and set up. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. And atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons. And since they have an equal number of positive and negative, that means that an atom overall is neutral. It has no charge. It is completely balanced. So one particle pulls one way and the other particle pulls the other way, and that means it is totally in balance. An equal amount of positive and an equal amount of negative. 
if we're going to look at a diagram of an atom, the nucleus we would draw as a little sphere. It's going to be packed with the neutrons and protons all packed tightly together. And surrounding that would be the electron cloud. It's much larger than the nucleus. It's really far away from the nucleus actually at the atomic level. And the electrons are moving all throughout that space extremely rapidly. So the inside again is our nucleus and this outside area that is our electron cloud. And the electron cloud, those electrons are moving so fast that they, in a sense, make a solid shell around the nucleus. Even though they're not actually solid, it's just they're moving so fast, it seems that it's a solid, like, impenetrable barrier. And all matter, as we said, is made up of these things called atoms. And the atoms, now they are all separated by what we call elements. And the atoms are all categorized by what element they are. Now the atoms are categorized in this way by how many protons are present. So if it has only one proton, then that atom is the element hydrogen. If it has two protons, then it would be the element helium. This goes for all 118 different elements, which we find all outlined on the periodic table. And this might seem extremely daunting because, well, there's 118 of them, and there's a ton of information that's present here. But remember, in biology, we only are really concerned with four of these elements. The four elements that we're concerned with are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And as it works out, hydrogen, as we said earlier, it only has one proton, which also means it has one electron, because remember, they have to have an equal amount to balance out. Carbon, well, it has six protons, which also, again, means it has six electrons. Nitrogen, it has seven protons in its nucleus, and oxygen, it has eight protons in its nucleus. And again, just like before, they each have an equal number of electrons to their number of protons because they need to balance out completely. They need to be completely neutral to be an atom. So that's going to be our four elements that we are going to focus on. Each one is going to have unique properties which is going to make it act in a very specific way. The first thing that you needed to understand though is how many protons and how many electrons each one of these elements had. The next thing to recognize is that when we draw these, we typically draw them as spheres. Hydrogen we would draw as a white sphere. Carbon we would draw as a black sphere. Nitrogen, we would draw as a blue sphere, and oxygen, we would draw as a red sphere. And that's going to be important as we progress through all these lessons because we will be keeping these colors consistent throughout. So anytime that you see a red sphere, you should immediately think oxygen. Anytime you see a blue sphere, you should think nitrogen. Anytime you see a black sphere, you should think carbon. And anytime you see a white sphere, you should be thinking that it is hydrogen. That's going to be very important for you as we progress through this unit. The next thing also to recognize is these, each of these elements has a different mass. They all are like a different size. Hydrogen has a mass of approximately one. Carbon has a mass of approximately 12. Nitrogen has a mass of approximately 14. And oxygen has a mass of approximately 16. That's going to be important for us a little bit later as we just think about how massive specific molecules are. When we are comparing molecule sizes, one of the things that we're going to use is their mass, and that is going to be based upon which elements are present. That is the beginning of biochemistry. So in summary for today, hopefully you understand that all matter, it's made of atoms. Stuff around us that we interact with on a daily basis, well, it's made of these really tiny particles called atoms. And there are different varieties of those atoms. 
that's the elements. And lastly, in biology, the basis of life is really based upon four main elements. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Those are the four elements that are the basis of life. And so, as we progress through this unit, those elements are going to be crucial for our understanding. On that note, until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.